Welcome to this series of videos on computer programming. My name's Andy Wicks and in this video I'm going to look at the question of what is a program? Well, quite obvious, it's a set of steps that you can tell the computer exactly what you want it to do. But unfortunately it's not quite that simple. The computer doesn't understand of any programming language. All it understands is ons and offs. The ons and offs level is called low level language. That's the binary code. What we understand are programming languages. These are called high level languages. And there are three types of high level computer languages. There are compiled languages such as Java and C++. And here what we do is we write the computer program. We do it all and then we convert it to machine code. Having converted it to the machine code, we then run the machine code version. And that's called a compiled language. We also have interpreted languages, such as Visual Basic. And here what you do is you write the computer program, exactly as before, but instead of converting it all in one go, you convert it one line at a time one command at a time. And that's called an interpreted language. It takes the first command, interprets it into machine code, runs it, then goes back and gets the next line. Compiles that, runs it, and then goes back for the next one and so on. Now this is slower, but it takes up a lot less computer memory, and interpreted languages tend to be easier to program. Next, we've got iconic languages, such as App Inventor, Scratch, and Alice. And here, you use images to write your computer program. So no typing codes at the keyboard, you just drag and drop the commands that you want. And this is probably the easiest type of programming language to start with. A language like App Inventor, or Scratch, or Alice will teach you an awful lot about programming before you get into the heavy coding. So which is the best? Well, that depends on you. If you can program already, then a language like C++ will run much faster than, say, Visual Basic. If you've never done any programming before, something like App Inventor or Scratch is a good place to start. Some languages are better at doing some things than others. So, for example, uh, Java is better at handling databases than probably C++, certainly C. It depends on what you want to do. And like any good workman, you have to find the correct tool for the job. Now, let me come on to one thing that is quite often a problem for people when they start. Do you have to learn all these commands? And the answer to that is quite definitely no. If you had to remember lines of code, I would never be a programmer. I can't remember these things. What you do have to do is to be able to remember the logic of what you're doing. I've got to do this first, then I do that, and that will give me this piece of information with which I can then... and so on. You have to be able to work with the logic. The actual lines of code well, those you copy, paste and amend from the internet. If somebody else has got a program out there that does the sort of thing that you want, you copy and paste that code and change it to exactly what you need it to do. You do have to think about what you want to do next, though. It's this logical sequence that is the problem when people start programming. They assume that computers can do much more than they can. Inside your computer is sand, and that sand can't do clever things. It can't make logical assumptions. Therefore, you have to make all the little leaps of logic for it. If you want it to go and open a door, you can't say, go and open a door, as I could with you. You'd have to say exactly what you want it to do. Stand up, turn through 90 degrees, take three steps forward, and so on. So you do have to think about things. But do you have to get down to the low level of the computer? Well, yes and no. You don't have to get down to the binary code. 
very few people ever program in the ons and offs. But you do have to get down to the level of the computer in terms of thinking. You've got to be able to break the problem down into all these tiny little steps. Steps that you and I would take for granted if we were speaking to each other. So programming is a skill. It's finding the right syntax, the right uh, logic for what you want to do. And that brings me to the final point. The real problem with programming is not programming. Programming is easy. The real problem is finding the errors. That is always the big task that people have to learn. And there are two kinds of errors. Syntax errors, so where you've typed something in incorrectly. You mean to type in print, and you spell print with two N's. You and I would say, ha, silly person's typed it in with two N's. The computer would just say, no, I don't know that one, and throw its little silicon legs in the air and play dead. You have to be able to find these things. And most good programming languages come with editors that will help you find that. That sort of thing is called an integrated development environment, or IDE for short. And the IDE will tell you all the syntax errors. What an IDE can't tell you is the logic errors. So you want to multiply everything by two, and your finger slips and you type three. There is no programming environment that, in the world that will tell you, no, 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 you really meant two. And that means that you have to get to test your program properly. And people think that if their program runs, it's correct. And it so definitely is not. The skill of programming is finding the errors.